Building a website is something that can seem extremely difficult and very intimidating if you've never done it before. But every woodworking business needs a website, something other than just Instagram or Facebook. You need a place to drive people to see your products. And in this video, I'm going to show you how easy it is to do. We're going to break this down in three parts. Number one, why your business needs a website. Number two, how to make that website easily. And number three, how to make the website work for you and your business. Let's go. So why should you have a website for your business? If you've already got Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, whatever you're using for your social media, it's important that you have a place to showcase your products. Because if you put it on Instagram or Facebook, then you're competing with people scrolling by. They may or may not take notice of your product. And most likely, the people you friended and they're seeing your stuff on Instagram are not actually your customers. They're more your peers. And number two, it gives an exact address to direct your customers to your product. In other words, it's kind of like directing them on a map to your physical business if you had one. You have a place to tell, hey, this is where you go to see my product, www.731woodworks.com. That tells them, hey, 731 Woodworks is where I need to go to find his products. And number three, you can build customers or leads to customers through your website. In other words, somebody visits your website, possibly they leave you an email address. When you have a sale, when you have a new product, you'll be able to contact them to Directly. Number four, it gives your business more exposure. So instead of just having an Instagram post, now you have a product page that you can link to and you can share that on your social media so people are actually coming to your website. You can be found on Google and other places like that so that people find your products easier. And number five, you can actually monetize your website with ads if you so chose. You don't have to, but you can. So as we build this website, I'm going to be using some pictures from a good friend of mine who does amazing work, allredwoodworks.com. You can go check out his website. So we're gonna, the jewelry box and the end table are his. So if you see those pictures, uh, give him a shout out in the description below if you think that work is awesome like I do. Building a website is very easy to do. It's basically drag and drop. In other words, there's templates available that just allow you to drag and drop all of your items and you can create the website. You don't have to know anything special. I'm going to show you how to do that. But first, why are you making a website? Are you making the website simply because you want to show off your product? In other words, portfolio style. Basically, it's just pictures. I don't recommend that unless you're in the market of selling locally and you're just trying to give people a place to go see your items. With that, why not just have an Instagram account and do it that way? Personally, I think a website should be to generate income for your business. And this is what we're going to focus on today. Squarespace, I, I have no affiliation with Squarespace. I just think it's very easy to use and I'll show you how I use it on some of my websites. First thing you do is you're just going to go to squarespace.com and then you're going to click that get started button. And from there, it's just going to ask you some simple questions. It's just check boxes, online store, portfolio. So you can already see how it's going to basically suggest a template to you based on what you select. I highly recommend if you're just starting out, go with the one page option. I also think you should select online store because we're trying to sell our products. We've got online store, we've got one page selected. Now we're gonna scroll down until you find the one that says Alameda. You're gonna click with start with Alameda. You can choose any of these, they all basically work the same. Just find one that works for you. Now from there, you're gonna to need to create an account. Email address, you can log in with Google, however you need to do that. Now that you've logged in, this is what you should see. Welcome to your site. You're gonna to need to name that site. I highly recommend you name it your business. We're 731 Woodworks. I'm gonna name it Woodworking because I already have a 731 Woodworks website. Now, it's gonna give you kind of a step-by-step -step on how to edit your pages. We're fixing to go through that very quickly. You're gonna see this. This is already set up as a template. This is not live, nobody can see this. What we're gonna to wanna to do is edit this stuff and put our information or our products on there. You go to pages, click that and then you've got these four pages. That's all your website is at this point. The look a book you don't need. So we're gonna go ahead and delete that. You're gonna click the gear icon, scroll to the bottom of that and click delete page. It's gonna ask you for confirmation. You're gonna delete it, don't need it. I think you need three things on your website. You need the homepage, which for us is gonna be the shop. You need an about section, you need a contact section. So when somebody lands on your website, the last thing you want them to do is read a book about how you got started woodworking with your grandpa's tools and how much it means to you and all that. They honestly don't care. And I don't wanna be harsh about that, but people, your customers normally don't care about your origin story 
at the beginning of their journey. They're there to look at the products to decide if it's going to solve a problem for them. In other words, they, you're selling cutting boards and they need one. Do they really want to read about your origin? No, they want to buy the cutting board. So that's the first thing they should be able to see on your website. A really good book to read on this topic is called Marketing Made Simple by Donald Miller. I highly recommend that book. In that book, he says, if you confuse, you lose. In other words, if a customer lands on your website and they're confused about what's going on there, they're going to leave and you're not going to make the sale. You're going to miss that sale. So when they land on our website, if we're selling product, we need that front and center. If you land on my website, what's front and center? The plans because that's our focus of our business or our website. So there's going to be a button there that says buy plans. There's a plan right front and center that I want to feature. Then when you start scrolling down, there's more plans. And when you start scrolling down, then you get into some of the other things we offer like tool deals, blog posts, etc, etc. That's how I have set up my website and it's converting well for us. So now we need to edit this shop to add our products and we need to get rid of all that stuff that's there because it's not necessary. So what we're going to do is just click on shop and it's going to take you into that page. Once there, you're going to click on all. You're going to select one of those items and scroll to the bottom and then uh oh, we get a pop-up page. So this pop-up page is going to come up and then you're going to select how you want your products displayed when somebody clicks on it. You can pick any of these, whichever one you like. I'm going to go with simple. So you see here, that's what it's going to look like when they land on your products. Now, you can click this little box here and it's going to take you step by step, kind of give you a guide on what's going on if you want to. So once you click one product, the select all button is going to come up. You're going to select all and then click delete. We don't need any of these products. You're likely going to get a, a code or an error code. I keep getting this. I'm not sure why. But if you back out and then go back in, it's much less products. You just have to repeat this process until all those items are gone. It may take a couple of times. So you're probably going to get down and have just a few left that just won't go away because you need to add some product, all right? So now all we're going to do is click the add product button and then you can choose digital products. So if you're selling build plans or CNC files, something like that, you can add those to the digital product. Or if you're selling cutting boards, furniture, uh, charcuterie boards, anything physical, you can just click the physical part. Now from there, you're just going to start adding stuff to your listing. It says add image. You're going to upload the file. I went ahead and made a folder that has my product in it. it makes it easier to find and upload. Just make sure you take good quality pictures because the picture is what's going to sell the item. I like that one. So I'm going to use that picture first upload. You can add more pictures later and we will. What is this? Let's call it a, a, a small jewelry box. Now you can name it whatever you want, whatever title you want to give it. How many do we, do we don't have unlimited stock of these? We have one of these because it's one of a kind, right? Or if you have 10 of the same one, whatever you need to do there, just make sure you click unlimited stock off unless it's a digital item. Now, what, what price do you want to sell out? Well, that's where you're going to set your prices and we'll go $49.99 on this. Once you click next, this, this is your product listing. This is where you're going to be able to edit everything. You have your descri or your title up there. Now you need to add a description. This is where you need to get very detailed on what your product is. The length, the width, the height, the whole size of it, what type of hardware you're using, like stainless hardware, if th what type of wood you're using, uh, anything like that. I don't think this is walnut, but if it is, we'll pretend it is. You can write a short description. I just typed out a little something there. Now, additional info you don't need to worry about. Let's add some more pictures. You're going to click plus and then upload the file. Now that from here, you can just select whichever pictures you have of your product and then upload all of those. Your featured image will be the thumbnail of your listing. We've already got our price. We've got our stock, how many we have in stock, any variants that you may have, you can add those. So if you have different colors, different uh, wood types, any of that, it's very simple just to follow the instructions or the categories on screen. Tags here is something that if you're listing multiple products, it will suggest other products beside this one if someone's looking at it. So if you have a bunch of different styles of jewelry boxes, you may just uh, tag them all with the same uh, title. So jewelry box or cutting board or whatever it is so that it can suggest similar products when somebody's on your page. You also want to check out the advanced shipping option. We'll, I'll show you how to do that later, but for now, go ahead and put the size and dimension of the box that you're going to be shipping it in. So for this one, we'll do... We'll do eight by eight by eight by two pounds and then apply. We're going to assume that's the size box we're using to ship this item. From there, you want to publish this because if you just hit save, then it's not going to be live on your website, even though our website isn't live yet, but you do want to hit publish here. Now you can see it pop up there. We have a small jewelry box listed. 
Sweet. So here they're, they're showing deleted. They'll go away at some point, but right now they're not going to show up on your main page. So if you go back and to just click the back button and go to the shop, you should come on your main page. This is your home page now. It still has those categories there, tops, bottom sales, and we're going to fix that now. Go to your shop, and then you have these categories here. All you have to do is click on whatever category you're at, and we're going to change that tops to jewelry boxes. You can do cutting boards, whatever you're at. You also want to change this URL slug. In other words, it's going to be whatever your website name is, slash jewelry box. So now we have a category jewelry box. We'll do the same thing on these. We'll, we'll make this one cutting board. And then the sale, we really don't need at this point, so I'm just gonna delete that one. And how we delete that, we're just gonna click the gear icon on the shop and then click this, you hover over the sale, you'll see the three dots and we'll click and delete. Now we go back to our jewelry box and we're gonna click that and make sure we select that it's in the category of jewelry boxes. Click done and save. So now when you hit the home page, you've got two categories. You've got cutting boards, you've got jewelry boxes if you have more than one item. If you don't, then you can just have one category. And what's great about that is you now you can just repeat that process over and over and over and add all of your products on there. It doesn't matter how many you have, you can add all of your listings or your products that you're making on your website. Now from there, we want to edit our home page because we need more than one product, obviously, but at the top of the page, we need to change a little bit. So there's a edit button right there. You're gonna click that edit and then you're going to hover over this site header. You want to edit your site header. You're gonna see a little tab that says elements. You're gonna click on that elements. And then from there, you want to edit your social links because right now it's just taking everybody back to Squarespace and you want to change that to your stuff. So 731 Woodworks, whatever your Instagram.com slash whatever your social media is, be sure and change those or either uh, change them or delete them or remove them if you don't have that social media. I would also recommend toggling the button on and instead of it saying um, get started, you want it to say shop now because you people are there to buy your product. You want to have several call to actions on your homepage so that they can actually shop your stuff. So click that shop now. And then right there, you're going to need to put in the URL to your shop. If you don't know it, don't worry about it. You're going to click that gear icon and you're going to go down and click page. And then from page, you're going to click uh, into the search bar and then click shop. That's going to automatically tie your shop into that button. So now when they hit your website and they hit shop, it's going to take them to all of your listings. When you're done, you're going to hit save. Now here's where you want to edit your about page. All you have to do is click on that about page. And then from here, click the edit in the top left corner. And then you're going to want to remove all of this text that they have just in there for filler. And this is where you'll des describe your business. This is where you can tell people about your grandpa giving you tools. And this is how you got started woodworking. Like this is where you tell your story because if the customer wants to learn more about you, they can click about you and then they can find out what you're all about. That's pretty simple. And then for this picture here, you can put a picture of yourself. You're just going to click that little edit button and then you're going to click replace and then you're gonna upload the file and then you can pick a picture of yourself. We're gonna put a picture of a box here just because I don't have a picture of myself right now. You'll upload that and then all you have to do is click done and save. Pretty simple. All right, now we need to fix our contact page because people need to be able to contact you if they have questions or have order trouble, anything like that. So you need a contact us page. Same thing here. You're going to click edit and then you can change this information in the contact us button. Anything right here, you're going to want to, you know, pretty much describe how they can contact you. Please feel free to contact us, blah, blah, blah. Here's my email address. Here's my email address or use the form. So they'll be able to fill this out and it's going to send you an email address to the email address that you use to set up this Squarespace. From there, you're gonna click done. And what I want you to pay attention to is we added the button earlier to the top right and you can actually see it now in any form that you're at. So if you ever add another page, that shop now button's always front and center. Most people, when they come to the website, they look right at the center and then they look top right. It's kind of human nature. And so you're always gonna have that call to action there if they wanna shop your products. All right, now here I'm adding another listing. This is furniture. So this is actually an end table that I'm fixing to add here. I've, I've done exactly what we did earlier. So now I need to add another uh, category because I don't have a category for furniture yet. All I have is a category for jewelry boxes and cutting boards. So here you can just simply type in furniture 
when you click on the category, click add, it's going to go ahead and add that category for you. So you don't have to do that outside of this page. And anytime you decide you need to make a change to a listing, it's extremely easy to do. You're just going to jump back into the shop. So when you come to your page, click shop and then go into all and find the product you're wanting. Click, hover over those three dots and then click it and then click edit. And then from there, you'll be able to edit this. So this one didn't have a featured image because I uploaded them all at one time. So all you have to do is upload a new file, find the image that you want to be prominently displayed uh, on your listing and upload that image. And there we go. So I went ahead and added one more product, which is our stove cover. Now, what I want to do now is I don't want that one to be first. I want the, the jewelry box to be first. So all you have to do is click shop and then click all. And then from there, all you have to do is the little dotted lines on the left, you're just gonna drag those to the top and it's gonna resort those uh, in any order that you so choose. Bada bing, bada boom. All right, from there, this is left over from the template. We need to remove this part here. So we're gonna click edit again on this main page and then we're gonna just delete this whole block because we don't need it. Now you wanna edit this footer. You're gonna click that social icon, click the little pencil and make sure that your social media handle is right there. When you're done, you're just gonna hover and click save. So we've pretty much got our website set up ready for business, but we still need a domain name. In other words, 731woolworks.com or yourbusiness.com, something like that. Before we get our domain name, I want you to understand that this is a basic website. You can add to this, which is what I like about Squarespace. It's extremely easy to do if I needed to add a new page or if I wanted to start my own blog or whatever I wanted to do. All you have to do is click that plus button and then it gives you tons of different things to choose from. If you wanted just a portfolio, in other words, a, a page of all the pictures of all the products you ever made, you can create one of those. It's extremely easy to do. You can even start with a blank page and have zero on it and just name it whatever you want. So you have any empty page all you have to do is click the edit and then from there you just click the buttons and follow the on-screen advice like there's tons of different things to add to your website you, you're not going to mess this up if you put something on there you don't like you can delete it so it's extremely easy to do you can play around with this you can keep these private where people don't see them now, all you have to do with that is instead of having it uh, all blacked out like that you're going to click the gear icon scroll down where it says enable page and unclick that click save and that's going to unlist it people can't see it from that point you can uh, build the page without anybody else seeing what's going on until you're ready to show it publicly so we have our basic website set up and we're ready to start getting ready to sell things. You need to go to the back to the main page where you see the pages design commerce. You need to click on commerce and we got to figure We got to set all this up to actually start accepting payments. And there's several ways to do that. If you click payments, you're going to figure out a way to uh, start connecting all of this stuff up. If you have a PayPal account, you can accept that you can go ahead and uh, connect that. And if you have a Stripe account, which I highly recommend because Stripe, you can accept uh, different credit cards and things like that. It's extremely easy to do. All you do is click connect and then follow the on screen instructions. From there, you're just going to create you an account and set it up. Just follow the instructions. Extremely easy to do. Same thing with PayPal. It's very easy to set up. Now you got to figure out how you're going to fulfill these orders because you got to get people their product, right? So you're going to set up these shipping options and then you can do flat rates. You can do it depending on weight. Like all you do, just follow these on screen instructions to figure out exactly who you're going to be using to ship with. We use USPS. You can use UPS, however you want to ship but you just, you can set prices there. Anything you need to do on shipping can be done right here. If you ever want to give somebody a discount code, all you have to do is while you're in the commerce tab is click on discounts and then you can create codes there. All you, do, you can name it, you give the discount code, how much percent off you want. And then down here you can, uh, whether it never expires, when it expires, like all these options are very self-explanatory. How do you know when you get orders? Well, all you have to do, log into Squarespace, you'll see this, click commerce, and then right at the top are gonna to be orders. When you click orders, they'll be listed right here in order that they were received. So your newest one will be closer to the top, your older one will to, to the bottom. And then from there, you can see when, if you, when you ship things, it automatically fulfills them, shows them as fulfilled, so you don't have to uh, worry about that. But just keep an eye right there and that'll tell you uh, when you get orders, you'll also get an email with the order. So people, you'll have all the information you need to fulfill that order in the email. You can get as detailed or as technical as you want, but this is a basic website to start selling product. What I do like about Squarespace is in the top right corner, you see kind of a computer and then you see a phone. If you click that, it'll move that to a mobile mode and it'll show you what it's going to look like for those on mobile devices. And if you don't know, 60 to 70% of your traffic will be on mobile. So you want to make sure this looks good for the mobile user because most of your traffic will be from those. Now we need a domain name. You need 731 
mobileworks.com. You need uh, whatever it is you're needing, you need to buy it now, and they're very inexpensive. So what you're going to do is go to settings, domain, get a domain, or if you have one, you can connect it here. Uh, so any of these are available for 20 bucks a year. That's pretty good. 731woodworking.com. Uh, any of that, uh, or you can search it. So if you're Joe Woodworking, Joe Woodworks, joewoodworks.com, is it available? Actually, it is. Now, if you if there's one that's not available, then it'll show up. So we know that woodcraft.com is not available. So if you chew that, it'll show unavailable. So you can't purchase something that's not available. So we'll go with joewoodworks.com here, and then you're going to click on that and check out. All right, so I just bought the domain 731woodworking.com because it's too close to 731woodworks, and why not? So we're going that way it can be live, and you can go check out this website that you just saw me build. All you have to do is go to 731woodworking.com and see it. Now, my website, 731woodworks.com, is where you can get the plans and things. So now you're going to pick a plan to... Uh, host your website. In other words, you're going to pay a monthly fee for your website to be active, or you can pay annually. If you pay annually, annually, you will get the free domain, so you don't have to pay the twenty dollars a month, but or twenty dollars a year. But most people will probably select the monthly. That's how we do it or done it uh, when we started out. So you're going to select whichever one you which is more comfortable. You can look through these checklists. Most people go with the eighteen dollar one starting out. That's what I did, and then I upgraded later on when I needed more features. All right, so I went in and edited my prices a little bit and up my prices on my products, and they've all sold out. Check that out. Man, that's awesome. Sold them out the first day. Woo, let's make some more. So now you just need to keep that updated. It will let you know when your stock's getting low, but you do need to keep an eye on that. And then if any time you need to add stock to your website or to your products, say you've got a bunch of these jewelry boxes you're selling for 199 bucks, then what you're going to do is go in there, click on that jewelry box. You're going to edit that. So you want to click the edit. And then from there, you just go down and add more into the stock, however many you got. But be sure to always click save on that. So now I've purchased the domain. I have purchased uh, the plan so that I can sell things online now. I've got my PayPal set up. I've got my Stripe set up. All we have to do now is publish this to make it live so people can find our website when we tell them to go there. So you're going to go to settings. Also across the bottom of the screen, you can't see it on this one, but on the bottom of the screen there is it says publish your website. It's just off screen here on the recording. But just to get there, you can go to settings, site availability, make it public, and then click save. And from there, it's going to tell you your site's live. If you go to 731woodworking.com, you'll see it. So let's try it. We're going to open another browser window. <laughs> That's all it was to it. We got a live website. Now let's see how it works. Does it function like it's supposed to? If I click jewelry boxes, it's going to take me to all my jewelry boxes that I have listed. Right now, I have one listed. If I go to furniture, it should take me to the category where I only have furniture. I like the fact that everything's sorted. So if somebody comes there and you've got three items, four items, five items on your home screen, they know exactly where they're going to go. So if I want to buy that jewelry box and if it wasn't sold out, all I have to do is click on that picture and it's going to take me to that listing. It's beautifully laid out. It was easy to do, as you saw. And now we have we can add this to the cart if it wasn't sold out. We can add that to the cart and make our purchase if we're the customer. Now our website's live. Everybody in the, on the earth can see it if they go to that website or if they find it on Google or however they need to do. And if at any point you want to change anything about this website, it's very easy to do. Uh, it's all drag and drop stuff. So like this is our homepage. I've got, we've got the homepage set up as our shop so that people, when they get there, they can actually buy our stuff. Now all you have to do is hit that edit button. And then from there, you can change, add sections to this. I really wouldn't add anything above this unless you add a button that says shop now just another call to action. And below the section, you can add whatever you want. You click add section. If you want to put your portfolio below all of your products. So if people kind of scroll through the product and then they start seeing pictures of your previous work or testimonials, once you start getting um, reviews and things like that on your products, that's a good thing to add to the homepage under your listings so that people can really start seeing uh, the, the feedback you're getting from your customers. If you add a section, just be sure you click done and save, and then it'll be saved on the new one. There's a whole lot of advanced settings in the settings menu that you can go through and look and decide whether you want to like connect your accounts, you click your social links. You can change all of those to add all of your own things to it. Uh, billing, you can change your billing. Advanced stuff like coding and things like that if you really want to dive deep into that stuff, but you don't have to, and that's what I like about this platform. Now, if you do want to drive organic traffic, in other words, you're going to show up when people search you on Google or whatever search engine they're looking at, there's an easy way to do that 
over time. Now, this stuff just takes time because it takes time for Google to index the pages and for you to start showing up as being a viable website, right? Because they are going to make sure that you're not spamming things and all that good stuff. But the way you do that is actually start creating content people want to consume. And so even if you do have a shop or anything like that, you can start sharing the information on how you're making this stuff, the tips, the tricks, the, the wood you're using, anything that you can think about to write about on that website, you can do. All you're going to do is click that plus button and you're going to start a blog. <laughs> now, this is what I use on my website to drive organic traffic. So if I build a project and I type out what happened in that project, put some pictures in there, that's going to start showing up on search engines when people say how to build a cutting board or how to build a dog kennel or anything like that, that people are actually searching for. This is how you get in your website to show up. And then that will start converting sales. That's a great way to start showing up other than using social media. Just pick one that you we just like the look of whichever one pleases you. I like the four post style. That way it gives us a, a basic idea. Now you're going to 731 woodworking tips and tricks, right? That's what we, you name it, whatever you want. It doesn't matter. Just like the store, it's going to go ahead and populate some um, templates for you to use. And then you need to take care of these either make your own or delete them and start over. I would probably just delete three of them and then start from there. Start with one. You're going to click into it. You're going to follow the basic example as we showed earlier and just edit that. Just click the edit and then you'll start typing. And then you'll type it in here. So you'll just start typing out whatever you know about woodworking. And even if you don't know everything, you know something. So just share your information with people. And then that's how you start building readers. And then they're going to start knowing about your con content. They're going to start knowing about your products. And you'll start showing up in search the more and more and more you post. If you do this over five, four, five, six years, it compounds into something like you would never believe. So if you want to add pictures to this, all you have to do is hover over and push the plus button. And then from there, you're going to select any of these things. I'm going to upload a stove cover because that's what I have in this folder. It is very important. I didn't talk on this earlier, but it is very important that instead of whatever your phone or whatever you've taken the picture with gives it the file name, you need to change that to what the picture is actually of. This helps with search engine optimization. In other words, helps you get found in search. Nobody's searching for IMG 6127. They're just not. So make sure you change that name to whatever it is. And the more specific, the better, but keep it fairly short. So this is a uh, tan stove cover, walnut cutting board, walnut and maple cutting board, whatever you've got going on there, you want to make sure that file name is that. And that applies also to your product listings I failed to mention earlier. Now that is a giant picture and you don't want that on there all the time. So all you have to do is click and drag that and it'll resize anywhere on the page as you move it around. So that's very, very handy to have and because you don't want just the one big giant picture showing up and covering up the entire page. You want your words beside it so that people can actually read about what the product is. The more you write, the more pictures you can add and put in there so people kind of get the understanding. So if you're building a cutting board, you may start out with the strips of wood, then you add the glue, glue up, and then you add the finish part and or the putting on the oil, and then you add the finish. All of that just basically builds an article for people to go read. Once you start having enough posts at Google finds that your your website is viable you'll start showing up slowly now part three of the website building process is how do you make the website work for you you have to drive traffic to that website usually especially starting out you're not going to get search traffic from google that's going to say hey this is the greatest cutting board on earth or this is the best furniture on earth like most of the time you're not going to rank in search in other words when you type uh, buy a cutting board you're not going to be the first page it shows up you probably won't be in the top 500 <laughs> so it's unlikely you're going to get a lot of traffic or, or any traffic from that starting out, especially starting out the first several months i wouldn't expect any but you can drive your own traffic there, depending on your following on social media and your friend group, things like that. What you want to do is start handing out business cards with your website on it. You can also start posting links to all of your products as you make them. So, so we put the jewelry box on there. That's going to have its own special link. So when you go to the website, let's do it. So we're going to go to 731working.com. We're going to click on that jewelry box. When you click the jewelry box, now we have the exact link to that website. So you want to highlight that and copy that link right there in the URL bar. And then you can paste that on Facebook. You can put it in your Instagram bio. You can start sharing that link to that product. So you put a product out there today. And then three, four days from now, you add another product. You put that link out there. And then what's going to happen is the people who come and visit your page, three, four, ten people, 
one of those people will likely share that link with somebody else they know and that's how you're going to start generating traffic to your website yes it's slow that's how we do it that's how i did it and it's worked well for us the first several months on the that i had a website i basically didn't do anything with it i put the website up there and i didn't drive any sales i wasn't pushing people there once i started pushing people to the website we started generating slowly slowly over time started generating uh, sales on the website so that's how we built it over time and now it works well for us once your website is live and you close the window and you're like, uh, how'd I get back there? All you got to do is go back to your squarespace.com. And when you log in, it'll be front and center for you. You just click go to site there, and then you'll be able to go in there and edit and do everything that we've already done previously on this video. One quick thing I want to touch on before this video is over that's extremely important because it will compound over time. And that is collecting email addresses from your customers so that you can have direct contact with them. And that's kind of part four of this video that I probably didn't should have mentioned in the beginning. The marketing, you're going to click marketing email campaign. So when someone checks out on your website, they're going to have the option to leave their email address with you uh, so that you can contact them about their order and other things. If they opt in, then they're going to be subscribed to your uh, email uh, list. And this is going to build it for you automatically here on your website. This is important because now you have direct access to your customer when you have new products, when you're having a sale, and various other reasons you would want to contact them to let them know about your new stuff. So once you get there, all you have to do is go into the uh, main page here and click on marketing. When you click marketing, you're going to see email campaigns, profiles, etc. You can even put up promotional pop-up announcements. So if you're having a 30% off sale, you can have that pop up. All that's detailed in here. How to do that. It's extremely step-by-step -step easy to do. On the email campaigns, it's also template-based. So all you have to do is pick one. You may have to upgrade your plan depending on what you have at the time, but it's very inexpensive to get started. And then from there, you'll have direct access to your customers, like I said. So I think that's very important. Also on your main page on the bottom, there is an email address. Let me show you full screen. Also on your main page at the very bottom, you may see where it says sign up, sign up uh, to receive news and updates. You can edit that option, but that's where people can actually go and put in their email address with you so that you're able to collect those email addresses. You can change that if you wanted to there, or if you have a, another email provider like MailChimp or ConvertKit, then you can connect that there as well. But right now it's on Squarespace and that works perfectly fine. Having direct access to your customers via their email is very important and valuable to you and your business. And it allows you to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with your customer because you can tell them when you have new products and sales, like we said before. Otherwise, they're not going to know unless they just continue to come back to your website. So it's a great way to stay in touch. And one last piece of very important advice is you can actually have your website make money while you sleep and you do mostly nothing. Start adding digital products to your uh, website. If you have builds that you have custom made yourself, draw up plans or have someone else draw up plans for you and sell those plans on your website. That gives another avenue of revenue, which is passive. In other words, once you make the product plan, it's digital. You have to do nothing else other than sell the plan because now your expertise is put into that plan. Your measurements, it makes it much, much easier for people, especially beginners, to start following your plans. I bought tons of plans over my time. I've sold tons of plans as well. It's just an easy way for woodworkers to build projects, knowing already knowing their cut list, already knowing the materials they're going to need, and then a step-by-step -step process. And then it also benefits you because you can have passive income on your website. That goes for CNC files as well. So once you make the sales of these products, how do you ship it? How do you have packaging for it? I've got both of those videos already covered. Click in the box on either one of those, get you two of those videos. Click in the box, get you the big old virtual fist bump. Go check them out. That way you know what to ship, how to ship, and how to package.